NHL.com. There you go. It's like your career comes full circle. I just want to thank everyone for coming out. He hoisted it right there, right under the wing of the plane. And we haven't even seen customs yet. Being with the cop, I mean, this is really fun. With sharing with my friends and family. This is as good as it can get, and it's uh, it's pretty special. When the cops the best, man. There's nothing that beats it. I think it was a small town. I mean, it's 30,000 people, and you don't know them, but it sure feels like it when you come back. And I grew up here until I was about 15, and then I moved on to, to Guelph and pursued my hockey stuff. But now we have a home here and come back every summer. It's, it's a great summer home. This is where Daddy used to play. Hockey. This is where he used to play. Come here. Like that. You can see in the community here, everyone gets along with him, and he gets along with everybody. And as you go through town, everybody that he has touched over the years is congratulating him, and I, I think that's what makes Dustin Brown who he is. You know, to see him on, on the late night shows after he won, talking about Ithaca, and, and to see him in his interviews saying uh, about how he can't wait to get back home to Ithaca, you know, gives us all just a sense of pride. Anyone that has been to Ithaca knows how much hockey means to these people here. It's another notch in Stanley's belt, but it's a great notch because it's a, it's a hockey community. With a full day ahead, Dustin was able to enjoy a few minutes alone with his three boys before sharing Lord Stanley's Cup with the entire city of Ithaca. The cup showed up about 8 o'clock here at my house. The first time I saw it, I mean, obviously, was on the ice lifting it, and you're so excited in the moment, and this is more of a reflective time because it's been more two months out from playing that game. Your emotions and stuff have calmed down quite a bit. Guess what's in that van? The big one. The big one of these. You want to see it? Open it up. You want me to open it? Okay, you come closer. Thank you, man. What's that? Congratulations, Diane. What is that? It's amazing seeing things through your kids' eyes, I think, with anything in general, but especially this. And they've loved every second of it. What is that? What is that? Cooper. No, over here. <laughs> Hi, buddy. They think that it's their cup, and they've loved every single second of it, so it's just been really fun seeing their excitement because they watched every game, and they really got it, which made it even more special. Cool. Look at that. The big one, huh? You're the only one who doesn't like touching it. You're probably the only hockey player in my family. Jake, do you want to see who's standing the cup's taller? Like this one. Well, let's just see. We'll put it right here. Which one's taller? Um, this one. Okay, you know how you have to wear your seatbelt in the car? Otherwise, the police come? That's what happens if you sit up there. The cup police come. He's a cup police right there. Do you want to line them all up? Is it raining? Is it raining? Uh-huh. <laughs> With the rain coming down, it was time to head to Dustin's public event, which was extra special to his wife, Nicole. We're at Joe Moresco Stadium. It's the high school lacrosse football field. I played lacrosse here since I was probably five, six years old. And I just made a cup available to the public for a couple hours. And all the donations and all the money we're raising is going for a Semper Fi fund. I signed some photos and uh, requested a donation and pictures with a cup, requested a donation. Uh, we did a lot of raffles for mini Stanley Cups, a lot of things. And it was all in an effort to raise money for Semper Fi, which um, was a big help to my, my wife's side of the family. My cousin was killed in Afghanistan, and the Semper Fi Fund was amazing, helping our family get back and forth to see him uh, while he was in the hospital. They did a lot for us, and we wanted to give back. Uh, I just want to thank everyone for coming out. Um, it's a pretty special uh, moment uh, for myself, and I had an opportunity to maybe set something up and, and share it with the local community that supported me. The cup police told me to, no one lifts the cup when they take the picture. Yeah, no problem. Have a good day. There's also another rule. There's no Jersey, New Jersey Devil yeah! photos. Yeah! There were rumors that people were going to be camping out. Hey, guys. They were here at 1.30 this morning. Nice to meet you. Good. Nice to meet you guys. Just thrilled that we were able to host such an event here for Dustin here in his hometown. We thought we'd maybe raise four or five thousand dollars and we ended up over thirteen thousand dollars for the Semper Fi Fund. We're thrilled that everybody in the community came out and donated generously and we raised a lot of money for a really great cause that's really close to both Dustin and myself. After a successful morning, 
Dustin was able to take a minute to reflect on his career. I remember skating down at Cass Park, the outdoor rink, and a big reason I got into hockey was my brother, Brandon. Um, everything he did, I kind of copied as a younger brother. I think every younger brother does that. And I remember pushing a, pushing a folding chair out on the ice at, you know, 7, 8 in the morning, and it'd be freezing. And, but at that, when you're a kid, you don't care about anything but getting out there. I used to run a restaurant, so I wouldn't get out until 1, 2 o'clock in the morning and then have him at a rink at 5 o'clock in the morning. Used to get tough, but uh, I used to uh, kid with the other parents that at least my car's still warm for the night before. As an eighth grader, he was a man amongst boys. Started on our hockey team as an eighth grader, and we won a state title. Getting out there on the ice at the rink was cool. Probably be cool for the video if we get the state championship banners. I didn't know they had those banners, but I hadn't been there in a while, so it was pretty cool to see the banners. We won a state championship in 2000, and, and the two guys that came with me uh, for the pictures were, were on that team, and it's a couple of, my, couple of my best friends my whole life, really. He always had the mental makeup that he knew he was he knew he knew was good. He knew when he wanted to win. You know, he always, when the game was on the line, he, it was a different level, and, and that was Dustin. And I think that's what people saw that made him think, you know, this type of stuff would be possible. He set his goals at, a, at an early age. As long as I can remember, I, that was his dream. Was he was going to be an NHL player. He's the first one, really the first Ithacan that native that uh, has done what he's done and gone as far as he has. It was always go, you know, with him. It just seemed to Dustin, no matter what the level that he was playing at, and, and then he'd go to the next step, and he'd meet that challenge. So it just kept going and going. And, uh, you know, a lot of people ask me, you know, when did you, you know, think he was going to be on NHL? And I told, I tell everybody, it's when I saw a jersey on his back. <laughs> it was cool just to share it with everyone here in Ithaca. He is a solid. Dustin Brown, Top Shelf Brothers. Day off to an amazing start. It was time to hit a few of Dustin's favorite local spots. The Fall Creek Falls is kind of one of those picturesque areas. I guess the best way to explain it is when we had our wedding, the people didn't to go off a registry. They just got us a picture of the Fall Creek Falls. We have 15 of them. So it's one of those landmarks in Ithaca that was, I thought would be a pretty cool shot just to get. From the most scenic part of town, it was off to Dustin's favorite restaurant. Anybody from Ithaca knows what the Pines is. It's one of those restaurants I came to since I was, I know, ever since I remembered, and it's one of my favorite restaurants. I watch you on TV, they're lifting that over your head. Oh, yeah. I've never seen anybody look so heavy. A new and I came and brought it here. Uh, he was a cottage up the road, so I thought I'd do the same just to get it here. We just put it up on the bar, filled it with some, some beer, and some of my closest friends got the drink out of it. Refueled, it was time to introduce Lord Stanley to Ithaca's finest and bravest. I grew up in the city, and my mom worked at the hospital, and a lot of those people she knew down there just from working together. And it's pretty cool to, to bring it back here, those firefighters, and they do a lot for the city. And it was cool just to share it with everyone here in Ithaca. The fact that he called me and said if he could do any one thing with his day with the cop was bring it to uh, the police department and the firefighters and, and thank them for the service they give. Cool. This is too cool. What do I, can I? Right there. Yeah, yeah. that's perfect. Everybody, one, two, three, Dustin. One, two, three. Dustin! Yeah! To be an NHL player in itself is one thing. To be a captain is another. To be a captain of the Stanley Cup champion Los Angeles Kings, phenomenal. And bringing it back, sharing with, with his hometown hockey, he is a solid. Dustin Brown, top shelf, brothers. We didn't know he was going to do this. This was a solid. He, he, he wanted to do it for fire police, EMS. Shows, shows his blue-collar, working-class roots, caring about the fans, caring about the guys who cheered for him when nobody knew he, he was going to be a captain and a Stanley Cup champion. What an opportunity. It's a great day at Ithaca. Before heading home to their family party, the Browns had time for one more stop. My brother-in-law owns a, a yogurt shop called Smart Yogurt, and we probably go down there five, six times a week with the kids, and we thought it'd be a pretty cool idea to, to eat some yogurt out of it, and it is really good, so it was cool. We're in Ithaca, New York, here at Smart Yogurt with uh, Dustin and my family and friends. Um, we're eating uh, frozen yogurt out of the cup. When I saw it this morning, I had chills go down my back, and now that it's here, it's just it's crazy. My two favorites are chocolate peanut butter and cookies and cream. Today we had cookies and cream. Where is it? Daddy. You want some? Yeah. Mmm. All right. You don't want any, Jake? All right, fine. I'll eat this all by myself, then. 
Dustin's favorite flavor is cookies and cream, so we went with cookies and cream and loaded it with Oreos and whipped cream, and us, we had at it. Okay, ready? Brain freeze. After parading the cup through the entire town of Ithaca, Dustin's family and closest friends got together to relax and soak the day in. When I was named captain in 2008, that was one of the first thoughts that crossed my mind is if I can find a way to get the job done, I'll be the first king. And I didn't, you know, know it'd be 45 years, but um, that was a pretty cool thing for me personally, especially. I pretty much grew up in this organization, and be the first person to, to hoist it for this team was pretty special to me. I think everybody was in a, a little bit in awe when he brought it out. You know, you see it on TV so much. It's so crazy to see, first off, just see it in person, and then to see him carrying it is a pretty surreal experience. At the end of the season when they won, I told everybody, I feel like this makes it all worth it. Having them win it, it makes it worth it when Dustin's not there for a birthday or when he misses one of our kids' first steps or a first word. You kind of feel like when the season doesn't go as long as you want, you kind of feel like it wasn't really worth it. But when they win the whole thing, you feel like, okay, this is why we live this lifestyle. Like, this is what he plays for, and this is why we do what we do so that he can do what he does. Surreal doesn't cover to see my kid uh, dreams come true, unfold in front of me, it's a, a dad's dream. To be able to bring the cup in there and uh, just lay down with it in my bed was the best moment of today. Today, do you think? I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. How's it going? No, you can't. You can't lift it. No. No. <laughs> L.A. Kings defenseman Drew Doughty brought Lord Stanley back to his hometown of London, Ontario, to share in the glory with the people who got him to where he is today. Where's your gloves? I got them. Right that, that's all part of the Canadian experience. Is okay. seeing you with those gloves. Drew wanted. Drew's <laughs> carrying it all day. I'm gonna try to keep my hands off it all day. <laughs> For Canadians, this is what it's all about. It's, you know, to touch that cup, to see that cup is like cotton candy. The day was also a chance to acknowledge the many sacrifices that come with raising a Stanley Cup champion. My grandparents, 6 a.m., driving me to practice, driving me to school right after. My grandpa, you know, six years old, playing road hockey with me, stuff like that. My dad did a lot for Drew. Um, he took him to morning practices. You know, uh, 7 a.m. practices makes me emotional, actually. The sacrifices were not exclusive to the Dowdy family. He couldn't have had two better parents to, you know, guide him at 15 years old when he left home. When he came to Guelph as a 15-year-old, I was uh, actually talking to Dave Barr, who was his coach, and they both said the same thing as how good is he. Very down-to-earth, very humble, um, really almost like a son to us. You know, they're part of our family and always will be. With the family photos behind them, it was time to partake in one of Stanley's messiest traditions. <laughs> I don't know what you want me to do, buddy. There you go. That's how we're cousins. <laughs> this is Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> no, you did a good job. Just in my neighborhood here, uh, show the cup to my neighbors, be a part of the cup celebration. Yeah. What's up, buddy? How are you? Could I have a picture of you at the cup? Yeah, sure. Get yep. a little touch on it. Congratulations. Awesome yeah, congratulations. season. Congratulations. No, not yet. <laughs> Five more minutes. After meeting the neighbors, it was time for Stanley to hit the road. Whose bus is this? Is this for us? Dowdy took the cup to City Hall to meet up with the mayor and King's teammate Jeff Carter. I've known Drew for the last four or five years. My dad actually coached him when he was real young. <laughs> how, do, how do I say your hand this way? Oh, how are you? Nice to meet you. Well, what does uh, London say to its uh, two heroes, Jeff and Drew? Let's hear it. Yeah. 
you know, thank you all for coming out. It uh, means a lot to us. It's something that we worked a long time for, so uh, thank you again. Thank you. Come on, let's hear it. Yo. Yo. Now, you're going to be hockey players like uh, yeah. Drew and Jeff? Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> going to bring you back home again when you're old enough? Yeah. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> London's finest were more than happy to give the cup a lift to the next stop. You're good, don't worry. Oh, thanks, I got you. man. Thanks. <laughs> I think we were a little nervous being uh, cabled in. Didn't know if you were going to fall over or not, and uh, did, obviously didn't want the cup to topple over. We got, we're not going to let it fall. For both of us to be from London and to show it off to the public together, it was, uh, it was a good experience for both of us. Drew and Jeff arrive safely at London's John Labatt Center for the Cup's final appearance of the day. Get in here, buddy. I'm not by myself. Well, there's only one thing better than winning the Stanley Cup. It's winning the Stanley Cup. That's right. It was fun, yeah. It was a lot of fun. A lot of fun today in London. Really happy to see uh, London support uh, me and Jeff. All right, let's bagpipe it out of here. Finally, it was time for the Cup's most important stop of the day. How are you? Uh, parents' house. Yeah. This is where I grew up. He's shooting on my dad. Yeah, there's quite a few of them there. Those are the dents in the garage. To be able to bring the cup in there and uh, just lay down with it in my bed was the best moment of today. It's our little shrine. I was really happy to see the photos that were taken today in that room. His little Gretzky jersey and Kelly Rudy jersey. Kelly Rudy was my favorite goalie. I remember when I was a kid, I would uh, wear it out. Uh, just on the ice and stuff like that, and everyone thought my last name was Rudy. This is just uh, surreal, like, uh, seeing this when I go to bed before every night and then eventually having this in here. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's the best thing ever. It was a little snug, just a tad snug, but still fit, felt good, you know, so it was, it was every night. Nothing getting better than that. You know, as a kid growing up, you think about bringing the cup home to your family and friends. When the cup shows up in your driveway at 8.30 in the morning and you, you pull it out of the box, it's the best feeling in the world. Oh, my God, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah, this is where it all started. You know, ripping around the, the living room with my skates on when I was one, two years old. It's like every parent's dream come true. He's talked about it since he was like four years old, always, you know, I'm going to go to the NHL and I'm going to win the Stanley Cup. My parents are the people that, you know, brought me up, brought me in the ring. The LA Kings and myself and everybody on the team won the Stanley Cup. It's our day, but it's, it's theirs just as much as, as anybody else's, so it's, it's pretty cool. London, Ontario native Jeff Carter used his day with the Cup to share it with the people who made this day possible. I was 16 years old, got drafted to Sault Ste. Marie, the OHL, and literally had no idea where I was going, what I was getting myself into. You don't know how much you give up for hockey, really. I mean, he came from his family. At 16 years old, he stayed with us. They're unbelievable people. Lived there for four years. They're, they're basically my second parents. Not always the most vocal guy, but uh, his heart was always in the right place, and he always led by example, and he was someone that everybody looked up to. Nobody had the drive to yeah. Nobody. He was going to the NHL. You know, he, he, he came close with Philly a couple of years ago, and with the run that they had, I mean, we're going to be hearing about that run probably till the day we all die. The day was also a chance to pay respect to an important neighbor. One of my best friends, Bobby Crocker, that's his family. Their mom, Chris Crocker, passed away uh, about a year ago. They asked me if it would be all right to, to bring a picture of Chrissy. Keith built that car in his garage, and Chrissy was always around. It was great for them, because I know they really uh, cherish that moment and, and getting the picture, but it was, it was pretty special for me, too, because I knew her pretty well.
Although the cop resides in Toronto, Jeff and his father had put together a new home for Stanley. Something my dad and I, we built uh, probably seven or eight years ago. He goes out there in the winter with his buddies and watches some of the games. We always kind of said that we'd bring the cup back here one day, so it's, it's pretty neat. You know, to see all my friends having a good time and everybody gets to sip out of the cup and get pictures with it, it makes everything worth it, so it's awesome. Jeff also got the chance to share the cup with his smallest friend. The dog is Miley. She'll be five in November. Uh, she's actually Jeff's dog. Uh, I found him in Sea Isle City, New Jersey, and he was just walking a like, little fluffy dog down the street. I think they were skipping at the time. What's that? Is this your dog? No. Inherited it, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a joke. It's my dog, and uh, Jeff would kill me if he knew I said that. <laughs> You guys want to pile in there? The cop took to the streets of London to visit some very important Carter family landmarks. How are you? Hi, Jeff. How you doing? Don't drop that. No, never. This is my office. This is Ellis Dawn Construction in London, and I've worked here for 26 years. This is everybody and their family, their significant others, just here for a day so we can enjoy the cup with them. Congrats, How you doing? I know it's something that'll make her happy, so... We can find a few uh, few minutes out of the day to stop by and, and show them off. It wasn't on the list, but I thought we got some time. We might as well stop by. It's always been somewhere that we always came back. When I come into town, we have a couple beers. And... To my son. Woo! We're so proud of him to the Stanley Cup. Yeah. Yeah. The final stop of the day was reserved for the building where Jeff's hockey career began. Yeah, we're at uh, Stronic Arena. Um, it's kind of where I started. You guys know what this is or what? Stanley Cup. Stanley Cup. That's North London where it started. One of the, well, yeah, one of the first ones, yeah. snug. Just a tad snug, but still fit. Felt good, you know, so it was, it was cool. Yeah, I keep laughing at him. <laughs> I think actually my dad had a little more fun than I did. He was he was loving it. He coached me right till, uh, till I went to Junior B right before the OHL. He coached me all the way up to 15. This is as good as it can get. You know, I've won World Juniors, Calder Cup, and now the Stanley Cup. For a Canadian boy growing up, you dream about winning the Stanley Cup. It's almost like a surreal feeling, but it, uh, you know, today bringing it back to my family and friends, it kind of, you know, it all kind of comes together, and it's, uh, it's pretty special.